Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Saturday. Hope everybody out there is doing well. I hope my stock market bulls are doing well. It is the Sherpa here for a Sherpa's lesson. This is the third week in a row. We're going to keep these going um, in perpetuity forever. So thank you for being here real quick, real easy. We're going to talk about MACD today. Um, while I get this pulled up, I want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, gained a lot of followers. We're almost at 2,000, I believe, on YouTube. Um, remember, you can go to everbullish.com, contribute to the cause, buy one of my portfolios, $100, beating the living crap out of the market. Um, and uh, even more so, uh, we're going to push over very hard here at the end of the finish line. Uh, we're going to run the ball across the goal line. Uh, we're going to take the podium and we're going to continue to beat the market. Right now, we're up 17% over the market in the ever bullish one all stock portfolio. Name another man out there that's doing it. You can't. Also, thank you for all the engagement with my new bulls. Uh, Dan, Richie, a lot of the boys out there. I appreciate the Ohio boys, the New York boys, the Florida boys. A couple guys out there in California hitting me up and also a couple guys in the UK. So without further ado, everbullish.com. What do we do? We're going to add this to the stream here. We're going to go here. Hope that that looks right. Yeah. All righty. So I got the little ticker. If you want to check out the performance, go buy one of my portfolios, go buy some of my merch. You can certainly do it. Um, but here we are. We're going to go to the little hamburger on the right side, right? We're going to go to investing articles, right? We got the Sherpa here on a Saturday for a Sherpa Saturday. Sherpa lesson number three, bringing the energy. Today's all about MACD. So remember, I put a downloadable PDF for, for you guys. So you can just download this, throw it to your um, desktop or wherever you store your stuff, and you always have the Sherpa's lesson with you. Um, but the main thing here is remember last time we talked about um, we talked about uh, moving averages and the death cross and the golden uh, the uh, golden cross and the death cross. We talked about what a moving average is. Um, basically, here's the deal. This is the second step. Whenever I chart something. So y'all know first I'm top down, right? I'm a top down guy. I got to like the stock first. I got to know about the stock. I got to think it's a product that people like. Second, I'm going to look at what the Fed's doing. If the Fed is um, accommodative and the market's on the way up, if the trend is going up, then I feel pretty good about it. Remember, Sherpa's number, rule number two, the trend is your friend. Trends last longer than you think. Um, and trends are easily spotted. How come we lose money when we trade? Because we're not following the rules. All right. So... We've got our moving averages. After we look at the moving averages, so we already like the stock. We already see the trend. We look at the moving averages to try to identify the trend deeper. And even deeper than that, we use what's called MACD. You've all heard of it. You all put it on your charts to look cool when your customers come into your office. Shout out Fidelity. Shout out Goldman Sachs. Shout out Merrill Lynch. You pull up Active Trader Pro. You sit down like you were actually doing something when really you were just getting coached on your by your manager on how to appeal to people's emotions to sell them dog shit portfolios. All right. Anyway, here we go. So MACD is the number here at the bottom. It's this thing, right? We see these on the charts. We go, oh, well, that's cool. And MACD also typically has this histogram right here where my mouse is. I know you guys can see that. Um, but MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 days, the longer uh, moving average by the uh, actually from the uh, from the 12 uh, day or the 12 period in this case uh, exponential moving average. So a couple things to think about. We know that the moving averages is a data set over a period of time, right? So the longer moving average is going to have a lot less bumps in the road because it's more numbers averaged together. The shorter moving average, as we identified in the first video that I made, the Sherpa's lesson number one on technical analysis and death and golden crosses, the shorter one when it's on top means that we're going bullish. The shorter one or the longer one on top, the shorter one on bottom means that we're going bearish here, right? So if we're going to subtract the 12, I'm sorry, 26 days, so the longer one from the shorter one, right? Um, if the 12 or the shorter one is on top, we're going to have a positive number. Conversely, if it's on the bottom, we're going to have a negative number. So in this case, what happens here, just like in this chart, when we have the shorter moving average on top, we have the actual stock price behind it on an uptrend. And then in the down, so here we got the longer one on the bottom, right? Remember, that's an uptrend. And then when they cross right here, what's that called? We learned this in the last video, golden cross, right? But I want to show you something. So this is MACD down here. So MACD is going to be the blue line. In this case, MACD is the blue line, guys. 
Look at what happens when the MACD line is above the signal line. That's also a confirmation of a bullish trend. So that's trend following. You with me here? All right, so what is the number actually? We already said it, right? It's the amount of divergence or convergence, so the moving average convergence and divergence indicator, right? So as far as these two are apart from each other is the actual graphical number here from the baseline. So when they separate, notice how they separate? Notice how much this number goes up, right? So the higher this number, the, this blue line gets, the MACD line gets, means that there's a larger separation from the shorter moving average and the longer moving average, okay? And the periods that you use for MACD, uh, MACD that is, is 12 periods and 26 periods. You can do this on the minute, you can do this on the hour, you can do this on the day, you can do this on the year, you can do this on the week, you can do this on the month, and all compressed over whatever period of time you want. But the standards here, um, they are uh, the constants, if you will, uh, they are not variable, they are constants here, are gonna be 12 and 26, right? All right, well then what's the signal line? The signal line, is going to be, well, we have it right here, the nine-day average, exponential average, moving average of the MACD. So now we're taking the moving average of these numbers, if they were in a histogram, graphically represented on a chart. What happens when you take a, 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 a function of a number and then divide it into the average of that function? That's called a derivation or a derivative, right? So think of the signal line is the difference in this these numbers here over another average of nine periods. All we're doing here is we're trying to separate the signal from the noise. And the main thing to think about, and what I want you all to know and understand with MACD, is that when you hear a crossover happened, 99% of the time when somebody talks about a crossover in trading, they're talking about the MACD crossover, and that's when the MACD crosses over with the signal line, right? So we got the difference in the moving averages divided by the average of the differences in the moving average. How does that affect you? How does that affect your trading? I'm going to use a real example because I'm tired of uh, always, you know, a lot of these educational videos out here like God knows when this was from. I just pulled this one off of uh, Google Images here. Now we're going to go real life examples. So this is Tesla one of the stocks that you guys know that I'm an expert analyst on, right? So when I was talking about the histogram, we have the histogram here, it's the blue number, these blue bar charts. Here we have the signal line, which is this purplish number. And then we have the MACD line, which is this red number. So I want you to look here. So this is an average, uh, this is a one year chart. We've got the simple moving average of 50, right? Just pretend it was exponential. Um, essentially, exponential averages use the most recent data and are considered to be better momentum indicators. All right, so we've got the 50-day up here, and what happens when they cross? That's bearish for the stock, right? Well, we're kind of taking, again, the derivative or a derivation of that number and compressing it over smaller periods of time to get more fine data without as much kind of uh, outside noise screwing up our data. So what we have here is we have a cross here. So I'm gonna look not at the chart first, put your hand over the chart and just look at the MACD. You got your 26 and 12, remember what that means? Those are the periods, right? Um, so you have the red line above the blue line. And then I want you to just look up. When I do that, we have the stock basically from a down, from a dead point here where we didn't really know which way we were gonna go, enter into a severe uptrend breakout. And what, here we're going to go back down to MACD where my chart is. We're going to look right here. That's as much as I can zoom in. And we have nothing but a straight up movement, right? And then this is where all my bulls are going, hey, dude, should I get in? Should I get in? No, bro, you missed it. You got to listen to the Sherpa at the beginning. And then they go, well, when should I buy it? And I'll say, after we see a crossover. And in this case, this is also going to highlight the limitations of MACD. But I do want to highlight this crossover here. Remember, I use real life examples. That's why you follow the Sherpa. I just pulled this up yesterday when I was walking on the treadmill. That's how easy this shit is. I'm showing you the top of the mountain. Give me a follow. Give me a like. Buy me a cup of coffee. I'm the Sherpa, baby. All right. So then we see that MACD starts to settle. And each one of these is a crossover. So technically, it actually crossed over one, two, three, four, five times. Um, but when the real big crossover happens and you see the histogram start to drop here, you guys see what I'm saying here? The histogram is dropping. That's when I'm going to tell you 
sell out, get the F out of that stock. Tesla is going down. And then what happens? It goes down, right? But notice that when we look at the simple moving averages here, see this is indicative of a longer term trend. It starts to trade sideways. We don't know what's going to happen, right? But when I start seeing this histogram growing and growing and growing towards the downside of that baseline, I'm out, right? And then what happens? We get our bullish crossover here. It's super easy to see. You can't miss this. Even one of those dumbasses at Edward Jones could see that, right? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So anyway, I want you to learn this. I want you to know this. So we're going to do a quick teach back. The Sherp is here to teach you. I've set the lines. I've set the ropes. I've got the crampons and the pitons in the mountain. The weather is clear. We're ready to go. And now it's time for you to strap the, back, the backpack on your back and start climbing with me. All right. What is MACD? It stands for moving average convergence and divergence. They converge when they come together. They diverge when they go apart, right? Let's teach back. Good job. Lesson number two. What's going on? The trend is your friend. Ever bullish rule number two. The trend is your friend. Don't forget that. And trends last longer than you think. And how is MACD calculated? Well, you got to subtract 26 from 12. So what that means is, is that when the shorter moving average is on top of the longer moving average, then that's going to be a positive number, right? When it's flipped, that's going to be a negative number. When it's a positive number, it's an uptrend. When it's a negative number or a growing number, it's an uptrend. When it's a decreasing number, it's a downtrend. Now you know that, right? What is the signal line in MACD? The signal line is going to be the very data that is the MACD line looking backwards over nine periods and average together. So there again, it's a derivation. It's a derivative, if you will, of a function line. All right. That's the textbook example that I showed you. That one's not as good as the one that I actually showed you that's real life that I looked up when I was on the gym yesterday when I was walking. It took me no, no time at all. If you download the Stockmaster app and follow the Sherpa, you can do this too. And remember, here's the main thing. Moving averages are a good signal, but like all signals, they can um, – yeah, frankly, they can give you false, false, uh, false signals, basically. So, um, MACD tr triggers signals when it crosses above to buy. So right here, right. So MACD crosses above right here, and if you have any decent software, you're actually going to get a message when it says that, or it'll tell you when it does that by putting a green on there. And then when it crosses again, it'll give you a red. So then it crosses again, which is a positive sign, and then it gives you a red. You can do this for day trading, particularly with Forex trading. Remember, I don't touch that shit. I'm just too good at swing trading. I'm the Sherpa. I'm the best there is, baby. Give me a follow. Give me a like. Go buy me a cup of coffee. Um, the speed of the crossovers is also taken. But yeah, so the more, the more the crossovers happen a lot in conjunction with each other, you'll see that there's like a choppiness of the market. So that means the market's overbought or oversold. Here's the formula again. I put that on here. I was kind of trying to fill space. Um, right here, I mentioned a lot about the exponential moving average video. I can go into more detail. I want to keep this relatively short. I've been talking way too much here, but straight up bulls, use the histogram, then look at the chart, then look at the chart of the stock. So do this shit backwards because it's a backward looking thing. We've got to watch this thing in real life. And remember, traders that use the MACD histograms identify when bullish. This is what the Sherpa does. So if you want to look, I've told you guys a billion times I'm a relative strength guy. I've told you guys a trillion times I'm a top-down Peter Lynch baller, right? That's what I want you to be. So I don't want you to use these signals necessarily as a reason just to buy a stock. I want you to use this as the third or the fourth confirmation, okay? I want you to love it top down first. Peter Lynch, I want you to love the RSI second. I want you to look at the chart and look at its competitors, maybe third or fourth, and then I also want you to use MACD for a confirmation. If you can get all those things, tell me how you're not at least 51% on average better, and if you're like me, you're hitting about 65, 75%, and on options, you're about 85%. So the final thing I want you to remember is that I did this for you. Go buy me a cup of coffee on my website. Download this to your, um, to your desktop. Thank you for following the Sherpa. Live the ever bullish lifestyle. Live, laugh, leverage. No reason not to get rich. Stop prostituting yourself out. Um, at the office every day, learn how to trade, become a better trader and a better person and a better investor. AFG, LFG, LGR, let's get rich. Uh, I got, um, 
that's all I got for you guys. I hope everybody's doing well. Really appreciate all the love from all the Bulls. Let's keep this uh, motivation going. Let's uh, tell a friend, tell a stranger, tell a neighbor. Uh, do yourself a favor. Go spend 100 bucks on a portfolio that beats the shit out of the market. Right now, I'm up 17.5% over the S&P. That's 34.5%. Uh, on the ever bullish portfolio since my last rebalance we bought ethereum and it's up almost 20 percent since i told you to do that and that was on tuesday um just if you had a million dollars if you bought the s p 500 you'd have one hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of profit if you bought my portfolio for a hundred bucks you'd have three hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of profit let's make this a thing let's challenge the status quo that's enough for me afg lfg lgr let's get rich folks have a great day Love y'all.